Okay, hola, hello, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with some Magic the Gathering action, and this is gonna be one of the first videos of EDH deck decks in the channel. And this one actually has a funny story behind it, and kind of why I started these videos. Uh, so we're hanging out with uh, with some friends at GP Montreal, and one of my friends uh, so decided to jam some Commander games, and one of my friends had a Niv Mizet uh, Reborn Commander deck with her, and her deck had some pretty cool tech in it, some good cards, uh, and I wanted to give it a shot. And the first time I cast Niv Mizet, I managed to whiff on 10 cards, and that's when I was like, oh my god, what happened? Uh, so it's like, I started to look at some of the ratios in the deck, and then I realized that actually, uh, it's not like completely unlikely to whiff. You really need to be precise when you build this deck, but we'll get into that later. But also I realized that Niv is just an insanely fun commander, which you can build a lot of different ways, uh, going from budget to more expensive. You can build combos, planeswalkers, draggers, good stuff. Um, so you can do a lot of things with this commander, and that's why uh, we started to brainstorm with her after the event on a couple of cards we like in the deck and stuff like this. Uh, so I'm gonna put down here a few things. Uh, what are the main principles what we use in creating the deck list? I'm gonna put a deck list somewhere. It's down in the description section, comment section somewhere. Along those lines, you'll find a list to an initial deck tag. But really, the takeaway with Neve is that there's plenty of different directions to take it, plenty of good cards to take it. But you really need to watch out on certain things uh, to make the deck uh, really functioning well. So yeah. So it was a nice experience and since then it's a really really cool thought experiment for me which I really tend to enjoy. I don't think I had spent this many hours brainstorming with any other commander deck. Maybe my Selenia Dark Angel deck which I'm gonna put up a video about as well. Uh, but yeah, so Niv Mizet is fantastic starting point for people who want to enter to commander uh, because it, it can basically give you fun for like multiple years. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into it and thanks Erika for showing me the deck and I hope you don't mind if I share some of our ideas with the world and hope other people can get some inspiration from that. Without further ado, let's go into uh, the commander and how we want to build our deck. So a couple of principles, let's just start with reading our commander Niv Mizet Reborn. Uh, it's cost Wuberg, it has an insane 10 out of 10 art. So this is one of the coolest stuff I have seen lately. Uh, fairly colorful commander. And then it has flying, which is probably the least relevant ability, but it comes handy at times. It's a 6-6 flying dragon, dragon avatar, mind you, if that matters. Uh, but really, the juice is coming after this. So when Niv Mizet enters the battlefield, uh, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, we can call it geared, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest to the bottom of your library in a random order. So this this tends to lure us believing, you know, in the, I don't know, party hardcore way that I'm just gonna cast Niv Mizet, I'm gonna draw 10 cards and life will be beautiful and I'm just gonna crack the table. So in reality what we need to be mindful of that if we flip over 10 cards in a normal commander deck, like 4 of those gonna be lands because we play around like 36 to 40 lands somewhere in between them. I used to play 38 so there's a lot of lands so those are not relevant cards so we have 6 cards which might be relevant those has to be exactly 2 colors so it cannot be 4 colors, 3 color, 1 color uh, to take it and they have to be different gears. So if we flip like 10 cards, we have 4 lands, uh, 5 Azorius card and a blue card, we're gonna take only one. Because we can take one of the Azorius cards and that's it. So a couple of principles we really wanna watch out for. Uh, we want minimum 4 2 color guild cards in our deck uh, to maximize this chance that we're gonna hit around 3 to 4 cards every time we cast Niv. Uh, we want to represent all 10 guilds. So if, if we have 40 cards it's better to have four of each guild than have like I don't know 20 good Azorius cards and the rest split across the board because we're gonna have flips when we flip like only Azorius cards and we can only take one. Um, we need to have minimum 38 lands I believe 
uh, because we have to kind of gobble together, cheat and lie a five colored mana base to cast our command there as soon as possible so we really can't afford to miss our land rocks so we wanna hit 38 lands and obviously mana rocks and all that jazz uh, we gotta do dragon tribal cause that's what uh, my friend Erika started dragons are pretty cool, they smash face we love dragons, uh, yeah all that jazz, it's really good for the new players as well and also in this field we wanna start on a budget um, and obviously later on we can upgrade with more expensive cards but this deck I think when I checked the list what, what I put on tapped out cost like 170 US dollars so this I, I think is a pretty cheap way to enter to the format and it's a ton of fun so yeah without messing too much time around let's look at some of the cards that we are using so let's go through creature base so with regards to creatures what we're gonna do every guild color dragon well not every but most of them we, we Want to focus on them let's that's the takeaway um and obviously uh here a distinction should be made between budget and non-budget build so the budget builds definitely want to uh play the the dragons of Tarkir or fate reforge i don't even know I, I think it was fate reforge yeah this was released on fate reforge this cycle of a light colored dragons so ojutai dromoka atarka kolagan and Slumgar. So those definitely go into the deck, they are probably like cost 50 cents right now. Uh, and they are all really really good. So yeah, so Ojutai can basically lock permanence of our opponent, Dromoka can make dragons even bigger, fast on the clock, Otar can make dragons super big, giving them double strike, Kolagan is really good against uh, situations where we suspect board wipe, it's also like a hasty dragon, good at pressuring planeswalkers on the board. There's a lot of merits to Colagan and Silunga the Drifting, that's probably the most insane of all because uh, it has tax proof, it's a 3-7, the, the most ginormous bot in the industry basically, so that's like you're not gonna attack through that and you can't really remove it either. And once we have like two, three, four dragons on the battlefield, that's like a one-sided board, right? Like those Sink turn sideways and gonna decimate our opponent board and they're gonna decimate our opponent face. So these are kind of the guild dragons which we wanna really flip from live with that. A couple of non guild dragons which are so insanely powerful that we can't really leave out. So Nico Bolas, um, yeah, many people may not put Nico Bolas in. Uh, what I tend to observe uh, what is good, it's obviously 7-7 seven, seven face smasher, so that's one thing. Uh, flying, it has an upkeep cost, but what really happens is that most people um, nowadays have a lot of card draw in their deck. So people even at the late stages of the game who have frequently a full grip, like if this little guy like you know clip someone with the left hook, left hook or right hook like they're gonna be out of the game because they have to discard all their cards in their hand so so this is a very very useful tool if our opponent you know like if our opponents can't remove this on a turn rotation it gets haste like you know they they really gonna pray who's this bad boy gonna slap so ramos dragon engine insane because uh, our command there it gets the five counters double up the mana immediately we're gonna dump our hand or all the cards yeah this is just completely retarded with nimbisat so if this is on the board we cast a nib then yeah forget about it like we play a storm deck at the point uh dracustat maw of the flames oh this is i really organized this weirdly but anyway so maw of the flames uh flying seven seven uh dragon which also decimates the board deals four to one target and three to any other target so this can really spread the love around uh latris dragon queen uh it's like i guess it's a discount version of the what is this uh, ooh, what is that dragon? Utvara Hellkite, yeah, the Utvara Hellkite, so this is the Dollarama version of that. It's cheaper, makes 5-5 five, five dragons, and then any other dragon enters the battlefield, cool stuff. So we like that. And obviously we want to include some cheaper dragons, I think Verix is one of the good ones, because it can come down as a 4 mana dragon, but if you have, you know, a bunch of lands lying around, then it can be like 7 power, 7 toughness, or some 2 dragons, and yeah, Thunder Mahal card for 5 minutes, Skyship Stalker can be 
pretty pretty cool uh, come down early pressure planes focus can get haste like yeah okay, this can get everything and then one group of stuff oh cyan dude dragon let's just talk about him a little bit uh so we're gonna have some like graveyard reanimation team in this deck with the dragon so we can toss those into the graveyard or we can you know tutor the the right dragons for the occasion per se so this is five color it's a little bit harder to cast uh but i think it can set up a lot of these like little subtle plays which we're really gonna enjoy and then there's three dragons which uh i don't play too much but I think they should absolutely be in the deck because they are super cool and work very well with a lot of spells that we're gonna play in this deck. Spellbound Dragon, uh, so we can draw a card, discard a card, and then, yeah, and then uh, what is this? it gets plus six uh, power equal to the costing cost, so we can discard something like Ginormous and then it's gonna smash him for 10 and then we reanimate that thing or something like this. Backdraft Dragon give our sources an instant flashback and we will see we have some really really cool spells in this deck. Hypersonic Dragon uh, lets us play source and speed spells at instant speed, so pretty sweet, flying case. So these are uh, just for illustration, obviously there is a bunch of other dragons which we can put in the deck. What we really can do if we are outside of, you know, moving out of the budget realm, uh, obviously put in the mythic versions of the of the Dragon Clan Lords, like the mythic Silumgar, mythic Dromoka, mythic Ojutai, those are insane. We try to keep this version as a starting point at a budget, uh, but, you know, those are the natural next step upgrade point, and they are really cool because Silumgar, uh, Silumgar, Jesus, Nimbus that can find them, so that's kind of nice and sweet. Uh, yep. Yeah a little bit of mana rocks I actually yeah, I think uh, so sorting obviously we wanna get mana as soon as possible and most other mana rocks that we are targeting is rocks which gives you any color of mana so chromatic lantern uh, fixes our lens tap for any color dragon horde uh, incidental card draw on it taps for any color fervor stone uh, commander sphere favor well they're really really good in this deck uh, because this not only taps for um, where is this any color of mana but later on when we have a new on the battlefield this is just a 5-5 beater with vigilance so that's pretty cool for a mana rock uh tome of the gear pack and i think fireman's vessel was another card which i was looking at it and probably the list i actually submitted that uh so yeah so that's also like a good mana fix really what we want to do set up the rainbow as soon as possible and just start casting dragons uh, and smashing face so that's the game plan so that's kind of the unexciting part uh card draw notable that uh and also these are you know guidelines mostly um steam auguri again is that colors sphinx is inside azorius colors the deck tends to have a little bit of problem with four drops because most dragons cost like six or higher and therefore the four drop slot is a little bit orphan and that's why steam auguri sphinx is inside really nicely bridges that four drop slot and dragon rods prerogative is just so insane it's like four cards instant speed uncomfortable in this deck so that's like pretty nasty stuff uh but one thing to know though that our commander is a card draw in this deck so we don't really need to fill uh, our deck with much card draw we may want to cycle filter find things but really raw card advantage need me that can uh, generate a lot so if you want to cut anywhere I would probably cut a dragon lords prerogative uh, for something else if you want to take it for for a different direction I just love the card because it's just so impressive on raid so yeah so that's as far as card draw go uh we need board vibes and we might need to put in a few more board vibes i like to be around seven this is five here merciless eviction board wipe of the board vibes it's exile everything love it crux of fate a uh, little brother of merciless eviction like mini board wipe of the board wipes because this is a one-sided board wipe like right? this is savage stuff in this deck defending clarion it's almost a one-sided board wipe against small creatures uh because our dragons usually survive this and also a notable thing is the lifelink which can turn around games if you have like 20 power worth of dragon and we swing in with lifelink you know that can that can be the difference between being alive or dead and you know having enough time to knock up other players in the in the board time wipe return creature you control to the owner's hand destroy uh, destroy your creatures bounce our niv destroy the board recast our niv draw four cards so that's the plan with this one gaze of granite uh yeah it's like 
yeah, it's 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 an interesting one, but it's Golgari colors and it can help us destroy like a lot of small things because dragons cost six or more. So we can we can do you know like a lot of damage on the board, good against plane focus as well, which lately tend to beat me a lot, so that's why this card's gonna be useful. Obviously Supreme Verdict can come in or like other versions of different void wipes like Fracturing Ghost if we are afraid of artifacts or stuff like this. Uh, but really that's the that's the six core, also five core and then we can build around these ones. Uh, yep, yeah, couple of other stuff, counter spells, removal value, just to show how we actually want to build this deck and one powerful thing about the niv deck attack that we can put in a lot of cards which has multiple uses or very versatile uh, because niv can find us these cards and it feels like we will always have an option to do something and interact with our opponent counter flux personal love uh, yeah, we can overload it when there's a huge stack going on and obviously people lose a lot of cards, uh, nothing really gonna happen and when the dust settles we have our huge dragons and can take over. Plasm capture, I think, yeah, that's kind of like the poor man's mana drain. However, in this deck it's better in, than mana brain because it's simic colors, so Niv Mizzet can pull it out. Four drop also, uh, which is kind of like an orphan slot. Uh, in our deck, other end kills anything, response resurgence kills a creature. But which is more interesting is the five mana version. We get an additional combat phase that can knock people off. Uh, Eldam rescore find a creature, so that's yeah, pretty unique kind of demonic tutor for portion of our deck. And harm of the host mimic that those cards can just be filthy in this deck. So imagine like Helm of the Host on niv -Mizet. like every turn we get a fresh niv -Mizet which can attack, 6-6, six, six, they can just take it forever, uh, they have to trade with it or whatever and we're gonna draw a bunch of cards. Mimic Rat, I would be a little more careful putting niv -Mizet under a Mimic Rat, notable that if we uh, have our niv -Mizet die imprinted to the Mimic Rat, someone kills the Mimic Rat, our niv -Mizet does not go to the command zone, it was stuck in exile and we cannot use it anymore. So I, I would err on the side of caution with Mimic Rat, but with many other uh, dragons it's pretty good to just get a free copy for 3 mana, sending like a 6-5 flyer and then you know, tap creatures without you die, or we can do like a lot of those things. So Mimic Rat, Ham of the Whole Star, All Stars, uh, Myriad Blade is another one which I would look at, that, that can be pretty savage, so yeah. So these are some of the you know value removal and counter spells that we use in the deck and then other gilded goodies. So a couple of things I want to highlight here. So charms are insane. Charms are really good in the deck because one, the command deck can pick them up and they give us a lot of options. So yeah, so as always charm with the lifelink turn races around. Uh, drawing a card we can cycle if he has nothing else to do and also like sometimes you just want to bounce in our niv uh, yeah, on an attack or a block and then be able to recast it, draw more cards is a charm also fixes our hand, we can cycle, make sure we can meet our land drop um, it can you know remove something really annoying but that's probably the least use mode and then we can you know snag something with a counter rhythm of the wild pretty insane uh Gru creatures can get uh how, what is what is the name of the yeah that mechanic oh jesus anyway so plus one plus one counter or haste uh, which is pretty cool. Pain Magnification, original Ravnica set, so whenever an opponent is dead 3 or more damage by a single source, that player discard a card. And that's, Jesus, that's not only our source, it's like any source. So if people start, oh wow, that, that that's gonna put a large target on our head. Uh, so okay, so be careful with this card. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna net us a lot of fans around the table. Still, I will give it a try. Ragdos, we can pick it up. Uh, that bridge strand, me a top 10. Uh, randomly put back either a non creature to our hand or a creature to a battlefield. Huge dragons, reanimation for fear, free. Deptors now. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, just like this is any creature, so this is also reanimation. Prime was Glorious Rebirth, so we try to keep around like 13. 14, 15 legendary dragons in this deck. So imagine when we have like five or six of them in the field, we just reanimate this, and then somehow they got haste. Like that's somebody's dead on that table. 
So that's uh, that's far as other gilded cards go, and yeah, on the non-gilded good stuff. So what we try to do uh, with this, because we have a bunch of six mana dragons in the deck, five six mana dragons. So what we try to do one is uh, survive the early game, set up our mana to get into these six mana gigantic dragons, and you know put some blockers on the battlefield. So Avish Rejuvenator, put lands on the battlefield. District Guy lets us search. Put the battlefield, circuitous route, two gear gates. You gotta see that our mana base, because a uh, budget, also a lot of flavor, also uh, for comboing reasons, has a lot of gear gates in it. Open the gates, uh, Solemn Simulacrum, this is just a solid stuff, four drop as well. And then two cards which are early drafts but late game payoffs Dragon Master's Outcast, six or more lands, technically nothing. Dragon Whisperer, also like eight power, it's conveniently him. And her, her, it's her, yeah, it's her. So anyway, her plus Niv Mizet, it's conveniently eight power, so we can start sinking our mana to make uh, four four dragons. So these are these are cards which are really good early game and then can be relevant late game as well. So we're not gonna hate drawing them. These are monocolored mostly, so our commander is not gonna find them, which is also pretty good because once we have the mana, we don't want to really find these. We want to take other cards. So yeah, so that's. Uh, that's something to note and then we were thinking a couple of like sneaky alternative win conditions which we're gonna pull up on this deck so door to nothingness I think it's like yeah it's one of the you know new players favorite um, and it has a steep cost so it's like double Wooberg tap sacrifice door to nothingness target player loses the game and comes into play tap so we need to wait a turn rotation but the effect is powerful like sometimes you know there is an opponent who is such in a commanding position that we don't have any chance to kill that person with traditional means like combat damage and stuff like this so we have a door to nothingness and we can just make them lose the game coalition victory yeah we can just win the game uh, and having one of each basic land type is not insanely hard to set up and our commander is a creature of each color already so that's an easy way and Hakai Tyrant there are just those boards when you know we're just gonna steal like 12 artifacts, we have our, our artifacts and then yeah, it's gonna be enough. Especially in an era when people play food tokens and treasure tokens, it's much easier to find 20 artifacts right now. So that's kind of like a sneak way. Also 6 mana dragon. I don't know why they design every dragon to be 6 mana. I either want like 4 or 3 mana dragons, so just give me like a 12 mana one, which like does everything, like Emrakul of the dragons or whatever. I guess Nico Bolas used to be like that back in the day. So alternative win conditions. Uh, I don't think I put anything to this list just yet, but again, like if you want like a combo, you finish, you can build around this one. And let's go to the mana base. So, guild gates, what and guild gates, easy peasy. Uh, yeah, most of our uh, fetching is fetching for these ones, so we can try to set the set the colors up. Um, but mind you, one thing that these come into play tap, so that's why hence uh, we're gonna play some of the shocklands. We can choose to choose them to play untapped and we're gonna play also some of the pain lands so these are because we don't want to have too many come into play tap lands we play 38 lands probably 11 of them is gonna play come into play tapped so that's around like 27 uh, 28 29 percent uh, the rest we want to be untapped so we can sequence properly that the turns which we don't really want to cast we play a tap land but make sure that when we really need to cast something we have an untap land arriving to the battlefield and fixes our mana so this is all the colors of the rainbow and also what is also very important having these like traditional good rainbow lands like city of brass gateway plaza command tower cascading cataract come into mind on a budget Haven of the spirit dragon uh, is really good to cast our dragons and also it has the additional utility that we can sacrifice it get back a dragon uh, maze's end that's why we play so many gates we have 11 gates so maze's end can be an alternative win condition that's by the way the only color less land i think in the deck and fire lit circuit because we realize that uh, as you can look through the the previous uh slides or previous whatever uh, groups of cards. We had a lot of like red and, and green mana costs, so we want the land which can actually emphasize that. We will have turns where we need like, I don't know, like 3 or 4 red. And Fire Lit Ticket help us getting into that, and right now I don't think it's super expensive either. So that's one thing. Hope they're gonna repeat that cycle, it's pretty sweet. Uh, from Shadow Moor, so this is the land base, and this is the deck, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah. 
so I'm gonna submit the deck list uh, down below take a look at that uh, really the idea here is that instead of building one particular deck you probably want to acquire like a 250 cards which is good with Niv Mizzet and you have an infinite source of entertainment so you can do like dragon tribe or you can do good stuff you can do combos even like just putting all the infinite combos like copycat whatever like you know you name it uh, Sahili and you can build planeswalkers as well so yeah there's just, just an infinite number of possibilities uh obviously there's probably like a power level threshold because uh you know you need to play dual color uh cards so those tend to be more expensive than you know single card but they tend to do more as well um so if the game is not blistering pace you will have a, a hell of a time because most cards let you interact with the gate state in different ways so you will always like you you're almost never gonna sit there and just wait for your opponents to do something because you can't cast your spells uh we make sure that you have like a number of two drops like early drops cycling through the deck uh, cards which you can find with Niv Mizet, cards which do multiple things and then we have our pay of dragons I think this is one of the most enjoyable command there to brainstorm about build and play with art is super cool through the roof so if you're one of, of you or some of your friends want to enter to command there I think this is a deck which I might uh, just give a shot uh, obviously this version is a little more casual, it's also a budget build, but obviously there are ways to improve it when it gets a little bit more competitive, so I'm probably gonna talk about that in some other video later down the road, uh, but yeah, let me know guys what you think about niv uh, yeah, thanks Erika for all the, the ideas and like, you know, joining for this brainstorm and showing me the deck, I didn't thought that, you know, I will have such an exciting time after riffing on 10 cards, but hey, here we are and yep so like the video subscribe to the channel and see you guys next time